If you want to improve at FIFA 23, then this may be the formation and the instructions that may help you to do that. So we are going to go with the 4-3-3 variation 5, also known as the false 9 formation. So if you're unfamiliar with this formation, there is no striker. They are a centre forward. They pretty much act as a striker. It's very similar to the 4-3-3 variation 2 if you've tried that. Now we are going to begin with the tactics first. As I go through, I will show in-game footage as well to hopefully back up with what I'm saying. So the tactics is very simple. Balanced and 50. Now I've tinkered with these ever since they were introduced many FIFAs ago. I actually think the more you tinker with these numbers... And I know that there'll be people that say, oh, put this on 37 and this on 71 and be very precise. I know that the depth can trigger an automatic offside trap, but I haven't found that all that reliable. I've tried depth on zero and depth on 100. And did I notice a major difference? No, I do believe there is a major difference with the defensive style. So I have tried pressure on heavy touch, but didn't really find a significant impact on the team in a positive way or negative to be honest press after possession loss just found my players a little bit too out of position for my liking constant pressure i don't need to say anything about that drop back i don't need to say anything about that either i prefer everything on balanced build up play now with fast build up i just found my players didn't put themselves in the ideal position we are going to look heavily at the midfield three and how important they are. And I found with the fast build up, it actually negated a lot of the positive aspects of the midfield three. Possession does work quite well with, with the chance creation, but I strongly recommend balance. I think having as much control over the game as possible, triggering the R1 to call players towards you, the L1 to send players on runs. I think if you can become more confident I think you have more control over the games and less reliant on the AI. That's my personal belief. It's what I use. I use this pretty much every single FIFA with the same sort of settings and it does me well. I get into elite. I get either rank two or rank one the majority of the time in foot champs. Players in the box is important. Leave this on five. Corners and free kicks, personal preference. So we are going to begin with the fullbacks. I leave everything on the default setting with the fullbacks. If you are worried, then sure, put your fullbacks on, stay back while attacking. But I think you lose a really key element of this formation is them supporting and creating that overload when attacking. So if you feel a bit less confident, no problem with stay back. I've done it before. When I play some of the better opponents, I do sometimes put my fullbacks on stay back, especially if they are using quite an aggressive 4-4-2 or 4 triple 2 But I think the attacking impact of the fullbacks outweighs possibly leaving the defence a little bit vulnerable. So the fullbacks, we are going to touch on to a little bit later on, but the majority of the time will be spent on the midfield three, and we are going to start with the CDM. So I leave balanced defence, stay back while attacking, cover centre, and deep line playmaker. I just found with the deep line playmaker, they put themselves in really good positions when you've got the ball, especially with your winger, centre mids and your fullbacks. They move towards the ball. They put themselves in a good passing lane position. And again, I will go through a few examples a bit later on. And then they can re they can receive the ball and they can trigger some really nice attacks. So that's the CDM instructions. Both centre midfielders have the exact instruction. So Kamavinga and Park Ji Song, in my particular setup, both have balanced attack, stay on the edge of the box for the cross. And that's the really vital one. And cover wing. Because we are going to have our fullbacks going forward, it's important for them when they do defend to be a bit wider. I have tried the cover centre, it works. Um, I've got two good centre backs in Alaba and Lucia. I've got a good CDM in Vieira before Vieira baby Vieira this is I did have World Cup hero Mascherano so I've had good players for quite some time and the cover center does work but I just found the cover wing is the best setting for the center mids if you are going to commit your fullbacks going forward now I am going to run just a clip here just to show you why that setup with the two center mids and CDM is so important so we are going to go over to the tactic board and then we'll go with some real in-game footage so here we've got the left back you can see the CDM and you'll see this in game. Move towards the fullback, receive the ball, and then it allows you to go back into that central space. There's our false nine. The two centre mids 
will go narrow. So they'll be on the edge of the box and narrow. Your left winger and right winger will be on the edge of the box but wide. So there's Camavinga going into the box. We will run that clip again. Camavinga goes into the box, narrow. And look at the position of Kjell, who's wider of Camavinga, offering that wider position. So here's the ball to Camavinga. Kjell is outside of him. But because Camavinga's gone in narrow, I can use him nicely and he gets a nice goal. Your centre mids are going to be really important in assisting and goal scoring. They probably assist and goal score more than your wingers. We are going to go to the tactics boards again and we're going to show an example and then we'll go to real in-game footage. So here we've got Cancelo to our right winger. This time our right winger is going to go all the way across the box. Our centre mids are going to Force that central position again. We've got a passing option. Number five, who has our CDM, can pass to eight our centre mid, 11 our centre mid, or directly to our false nine, who are all hovering on the edge of the box. So here's our winger going central. In a moment, keep an eye on our centre mids and just look at their position as the midfield three. So they're always going to be in, in this position. Our CDM is always going to pick up these nice positions. There's one of our centre mids. We use our winger, bang, it's a goal. So that pass, either to a centre mid or to a winger, happens very often. It's a really nice, easy pass from either using one of the other centre mids to make that pass to the winger or using the false nine to make that pass to the centre mid. That passing option is always going to be on. Next, let's have a look at our attacking three because they're also going to be really important in our instructions. So our left winger and right winger have the exact same instruction. Stay forward. Now, you need to be careful with this on old gen because stay forward and old gen means they're literally going to be on the halfway line. They're going to be as high as they possibly can be staying on side. Next gen, they do drop a bit deeper. The stay forward is a bit false, to be honest. But I like to put stay forward anyway because they just take that slightly more attacking position. We keep balance width for chance creation, getting behind, and get in the box for the cross. The reason we have balance width, if we go to that previous clip, is because if there is a space vacated by our centre mid, so we've got Camavinga dropping a little bit deeper here, then the winger will take up the space where the centre mid would have taken up if that centre mid was higher. That's why we go balance width. I have tried of cut inside, I have tried with stay wide, I just find that balance width puts them in the best position possible. Our false nine, stay central, get in behind and stay forward. Now, that's the tactic. You've seen a few in-game clips. I am going to leave you with a few goals that I've scored, about four or five for you to see. And hopefully you can see how this formation works, especially keeping focus on the centre mids and the position they take up. But let me know if you give this a go. Hopefully it works for you. Like I said, it's not going to be one of those plug in play where you instantly go from struggling in a division or getting 11 wins in foot champs and then getting 20 and 0, for example. But it is a really rewarding formation and rewarding instructions when you practice with it and when you get it right. So here are some clips. Enjoy. <laughs> 